Hi, I'm Nita Gill with VegetableFruitCarving.com. What I'm going to show you is something that you'll find useful when carving pumpkins and other hollow fruit that you intend to light from within. When carving a pumpkin lantern or a watermelon lantern, how, you, how thick you carve the fruit or the rind determines how much light passes through it, determines areas of light and dark. So I'm going to demonstrate that concept so that you have a little bit better understanding of it. Here's a pumpkin that I created that demonstrates the concept that I'm trying to express. So we have varying amounts of light and dark. The darkest thing we're going to see is this black line. What I did is I actually um, painted that with a, a black marker. So if you want dark, dark areas, you can do that. The next darkest area we're going to see are all the areas where I left the skin intact. After that, the next lightest areas are going to be these areas where the skin's been peeled away but it's still thick. Then what I did, these spaces in between, I carved them deep, like deep uh, squares. And the reason I did that is because I want you to see, once it's lit, how much more light comes through the center where it's thinner uh, and it gradually less light comes through as it reaches the edge of these. And then you can see that less light comes through this. So once it's lit, you'll see what I'm talking about. Then, uh, of course, the most light is going to pass through any area that you carve all the way through. Around this open heart, I've carved with a V-cutter all around the heart, so again, that you can see how that's going to look once it's lit from within. Now let me show you how this looks with the light inside, and you'll see what I mean. This isn't the prettiest pumpkin, the way it looks in the full daylight, but once the light's coming through it, You'll see what I'm talking about, how the varying depth of how you carve determines the amount of light that comes through it, which determines how it looks once it's lit. Let's take a look. This looks really pretty once it's lit, doesn't it? Now obviously the most amount of light is going to pass through the center heart where it's cut all the way through. And then you'll notice where I had made the V cuts around the edges of that heart right in the center, and you can see the deeper areas of the V have more light coming through them. When you look just outside of that heart, you see the scalloped edge, and that scalloped edge is where I went a little bit deeper, so it's a little bit lighter than the part of the heart just inside those scallops. Just outside the scallops, you'll notice it's quite dark, and that's where I left the skin intact. I didn't peel away any. Then, if you look at the surrounding heart around that, where I've got the squares, you can see how the depth of the carving determines the amount of lightness and darkness that shows through. So you can see the center of each of those deep squares is lighter than the outside of each of those squares. And then alternately, you can see the squares where I only shaved the skin off and those are darker. Now surrounding that, we've got the area that I had drawn on with magic marker. That's the darkest area. And then outside of that, We've got the pumpkin with its skin intact, and the light areas are the areas that I carved away using a V-cutter. So that's how you can control the lightness and darkness when you're carving a pumpkin lantern. And once you understand this concept, you can use it for simple designs, like, for instance, this cartoon design where you've got solid areas of light and dark, or you can use it for portraits to give more of a three-dimensional look, like this Abe Lincoln portrait. Just one more thing. When I put the candle inside, I didn't like how you could see right into the pumpkin. Now, it looks different on the camera than it does in person, and I just didn't like it. And so what I did is I carved this little heart. You can see it's significantly thinner than the rest. This is all about this thick, and this, as you can see, is only this thick. So once I put this inside, just tucked it right in like that, it still let a lot of light through this center more than any of the rest, and yet you couldn't see inside, so I actually liked that solution better. I hope you find this simple demonstration useful for the next time you carve your own pumpkin lantern, or even a watermelon lantern. And if you're interested in other fun fruit carving ideas, visit my website at vegetablefruitcarving.com. I'm Nita Gill, that's all for now. Bye.